conceal your face when you're walking around town. The idea of a shinobi, he would have done a lot of reconnaissance work on a street, uh, the market road, etc. in a crowd. Merchants, farmers, Shinto priests, uh, there's, it could go on and on. It depends the role that you're playing and how well that you play that role. You have to have the knowledge behind the person that you're imitating. You, you can find an example of if you were to impersonate an electrician or something, you have to know the lingo, the talk of an electrician. You have to have the knowledge of an electrician. Uh, as far as having to be able to do the tasks at hand and actually do the work. And then, you know, you gain your intel as you are the electrician. They would have stuff ready to go for their ninja mission. Already made. Recipes, fire recipes, blah blah blah, the tools. Next, essential tool other than your hat. By the way, the hat can be used not just for concealing the head, but there's there's a, ten other tricks I've heard from other ninjutsu instructors uh, about uses for the hat. Uh, it being straw material and stuff like that can be useful. The other thing is Kagi Nawa. Hook and rope, right? You're gonna have to do some climbing. You need to know climbing techniques. You need to know your rope knots, how to climb up the rope, down the rope, etc. Kagi Nawa, hook and rope. My favorite though is this one. This right here, if it's on a windowsill or a rooftop or something like that, you know. You can like hang onto it and it's kind of like your hand. You're just holding on by your hand. That's why this would land flat or be just curved so it digs into the wood or material that it would dig into. And it grips and it would be less seen or less chance of being seen for that matter. It's not exactly fancy. Senjaku Tengu. Scarf. Okay. Tengu. Face mask basically. Scarf. It's just one long piece of black cloth. Some other people have tricks of just keeping it folded up in a certain way, so that way when you pull on it, it comes out in one piece and you're quick to wrap it around, etc. A million other tricks, right? You can dress in Jaku Tengui face, Ninja Mask Man. A million uses for this thing. Right there. That's how they were tied. <laughs> That's right. There it is. Because <laughs> these should be about an arm length. Something like that. Or just custom fit, tied up. I have guys that's tied up long, so it's like it will fit anybody's. But you grab just a little bit at the end so that you have enough to tie with. You grab the first top part of your head, but it's wide, so it covers the first top part of your head. You wrap it down, around, and you have a bottom part that hangs down that you put over the bottom part of your face. Tie it into the back, and you have one form. Bring that small part to the back of your head, and then you bring this down, and then you wrap this bottom part around your face, and you just make your simple adjustments, and you'll have a ninja mask. That's how you use your Shinjaku Tengui, man. The other thing is light, a form of light. So infiltration light, gondol lanterns, etc. Nowadays, I have this tiny little nifty ninja keychain light that I can easily conceal and it creates just a tiny bit amount of light, you know, all those ninja details that we love. You Next. Have, didn't you have a light that uh, was actually like a candle holder that you would stick into the wall? Yeah, it's just called a pipe candle holder. You just, it's on a spike, you just stick it into the, to wood or tree or whatever and you have a form of light, but it's, it's candle. Medicine, carried within like a little wooden box, Imro, wrapped up in your tenagui, Basically, you would want that on you though. That'd be like a necessity. Like it mentions in Shuniki to have your food on you and your medicine on you because those are important things. You may have a whole bag of goodies and you're in the middle of your mission, but you may have to, oh no, someone saw me. And you may have to take off and leave everything behind you. So you want your food and medicine that are very important to you because you're out in the middle of nowhere and you have to just run away from the town and go into the woods and survive a couple days so you get back to your camp or whatever, or even the day, whatever. So we need your medicine on you. Of course, naturally, I'm John Johnson. I got my Johnson & Johnson <laughs> modern container here. <laughs> yeah. Some way to take down information while you're gathering information. Pencil. Use a brush and ink. You know, dip, dip. Kanji it out. Draw out their topography maps however the best they could. They had methods of like, they actually had math 
you know, math techniques down for measuring heights of a building. They look at a building and go, bam, bam, and they actually know how to like tell how tall that building is and mark that down for, you know, their lord or whoever they're reporting to. Uh, me, I have my nice little space pen that writes anywhere and everywhere, underwater and everything. Paper that I can go anywhere and everything like that. So I will get my information down no matter what. The last tool, a Denohi or Ember carrying case, a way to start fighter, primitively, basically. Uh, but it has to be on you and you have to be able to get it done quickly. Nowadays, a old fashioned lighter, you know, but basically a form of fire. You have to have fire on you, create fire. It's a necessity to your survival, a necessity to your uh, mission, sometimes. So that's basic tools that you want on you as a shinobi on his mission. Small things that would actually make a big difference when you get down to it. So like, uh, my favorite thing is the rice. Okay, yes, the five colored rice. Each, each color represents characters of, um, they created their own secret code, you know, or it could have been basic, I'm not sure, you know, but uh, nowadays I would create my own code, of course. So I'd go along, Path and sprinkle out not only I'm green, okay, I'm green rice. I leave my fellow Shinobi finds it and leaves either a message or the direction that he's going. Um, a spy from the opposite side tracking and tailing and trying to find out what we're doing, what me and Paul here are doing. I have to make sure that they're displayed in a certain way that, you know, if even if the person does find them, they might not, if, if, if they're tampered with, Paul would know. He has to know, okay, hey, wait, this ain't right. This ain't put down right. They're not laid in the right way. It would be real intricate. So, the rice, it goes, it gets deep and it gets clever and I really like using it. It's fun. Oh, yeah, cool. Silent sandal. There's two versions. My favorite version though is one with fur on the bottom. These are my little versions. Cheesily made. Nothing fancy, but they're silent. <laughs> Remember that indoors of the Japanese traditional room back in the time when ninja were creeping about either it was wood or it was a tatami, which was like a straw material. So it's you know it, it, it you can't just scuff your feet. And when you crunch on it, sometimes if it's if it's well walked on, it has a crunching sound to it sometimes. So, soft pads on the bottom of the sandal will silence any sliding when you set down the sandal, etc. And this is done when you creep indoors, past people at night. You find it very essential, especially if you're past people. Back then, they had guards or listening scouts, whatever you want to call them. They walked around with clappers. They had different amounts of claps, the rate of clapping, if it was fast, if it was slow, and how many claps, one, two, one, two, three, etc. And they all meant, you know, uh, they had ones for telling time, they had one for telling everything was okay, etc. Basically, that was the news report in town. This falls under the categories with swords with the trick, or tricks of the sword. So if you put it against the wall, you use this as a foothold to get to a high height. Boom, boom, you get to the top, and you pull up your sword. Take your string and tie it to a tree. And you stick your sword into the ground. You would actually drape your kimono or some kind of cloth, whatever your rainproof material, over the string and you bunk right under it. And this would be like an instant shelter for a quick rain. You know, a rain shower quick goes over, you don't exactly have the proper clothing on. You stick this up, wait it out, wait for the rain to pass. Put the kimono back on and you carry on your mission, right? If Dan were my, uh, the guy coming up behind me, what I would do is I would have this long sageo and I would tie it to one of the branches of the tree. And if there was danger up ahead, I would be hitting here and I would go one, two, and that would signal him to know that there was danger, don't go, or one would be go ahead, you know, go ahead and proceed. So that's, a very, very good fine example of indirect communication. That's another yes. Piece of the 
they're, they're going for your nuts. That's, that's issues. That's from the Tadapter you use, so you can feel free to use that. I love it. Thank you. You tie it to something in a pathway, and when someone comes walking along, you pull the string, and it will trip them as they walk through. He's here to just steal my sword, try to chop my head off with it, or just to steal my sword as a, as, as a test. Whatever the reason, he's stealing my sword. I'm asleep, but when he tries to do it, the trick is, I would feel the string move underneath me. And I feel the string pulling underneath me, and I, oh my god, even if I don't have a right pull, I can at least come into, etc. I'm sure you guys can train the details yourself, the position of the sword, but that's the basic trick. Thank you, Dan. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Okay, someone tries to steal the sword. He's going to feel that string move. Oh, uh -oh. someone's messing. Someone's going to hand it. Yeah. <laughs> Not only is it used to silence footsteps, just like the trick he showed with the mask, you roll this out in front of you in a room, walk on it, silence the footsteps. And then you have to roll out the mat in front of you again and continue on the rooftop and you repeat that process until you're all the way across. You can do this with your leather belt too. It's not rocket science. Wrap it around the trunk and you hold it tight like this as you shimmy up. And you got the end of the belt wet. Me up. Yeah. A little bit tight. Hold well, the body weight, guys. Let's let's experiment. <laughs> let's see. I'm curious now. Without a hold, it's wet and everything. Decent. I think I'd make it to the top with enough time. So there's nice, one. nice. Yeah, yeah. And that's one trick to do it. But you gotta wet the end, or else it, it, it'll just slide off. This is a design that's from the Shoninki, my favorite of all the manuals. And this is my favorite tool, or trick, and everything out of all of it, really. Because this is the only thing that I can make as a tool yeah. from that hole. It's called the collapsing climbing rake. This is for you guys to play with. It collapses so that you can easily carry it around. Mobility, purpose, right? Hold on it, and you silently hook your hook onto the... That one's got some stretchy rope man. here. Let me give you this one, man. That's pretty neat. <laughs> that is probably my favorite because again it goes with how it's like the silent sneaky portion aspect that they went through, you know. Not just throw the grapple hook up there. Silently set it up there with this tricky little like, quick made <laughs> things around us, you know. Yeah, I think so as well, yeah. Introducing this, you know, because when we start practicing these movements, because you know that's the last thing you want to do is trade punches with some guy with a knife, you know. So, same thing, you know what I'm saying? Come out, oh, you know. He can grab my knife, control of that, just control the threat. That's all it is. Same punch or knife. Either way, the threat takes away the threat. Oh. Simple shoshu technique. Just redirecting me. Put my arm behind, eliminating one threat. Make so, right this here. is where you guys are going to practice it. And then, guys, when you come in here, you push up on the elbow, twist. Therefore, it feeds. When you get to that point, you slide both hands, and you got to like this. That's pretty much you're going to go like this. This hand is hard to the next area, is going to come in like right here. And you're gonna immediately you're gonna grab this. Looks good. Boom! Boom! Make it. 
What do we say? You're gonna bring it this way. And you're gonna quickly. Therefore, you have that in the hand already. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tsubishi blinding powder egg. You know, after your technique, that's when you would, you know, this comes out from wherever the heck, however the heck you're carrying it. Yes, like, this is, it's egg, it's fragile. Uh, I'm not careful. Like the tricks of the trade that go with that. <laughs> One thing to be very careful out here about using the Tsubishi stuff, the wind. You don't want Blow right. Oh, yes. Yeah, so, I want you to technique me after you have my arm down. Push my arm away. That's it. Grab it. Now you just, just, just yank me and pull me off to the side. Oh! Now is when you crack that egg and you throw it in my face. Really? Ooh, you, I caught you stealing in. Ah! Oh! Oh! Oh, <laughs> oh yes, you okay. Exactly. <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> I've been blinded. You got a little bit on your side. <laughs> Baking cakes. I caught you. I caught you. Oh. oh. <laughs> that's great. That's, that's, that's awesome. That's, I love it. That's gliding. Oh, I love it. All right, we're gonna make him cake. Oh, that is awesome. That's Kabuki. We think of it more. I'm going to be in a little bit of a ready defensive position. You know, like I'm receiving. So I might punch you here, and the Chino Cup is coming into here. So traditionally, traditionally, a little bit like this. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll punch you. No, no, no. So I'm thinking here and then in. And then we take the space in here. Really, as I come in, I want to be loaded to strike again. You'll see a lot of people come up hit, and then that's it. Really, you want to come back and come in. So if I hit again, mm. come in and do something. Come back here, then they got to switch up, and then come into here. But it should be it should be a forward press into the idea. The idea is I'm, I'm going back to go forward. So when he punches, really, I'm just taking a step back here to come in forward to here. And this isn't necessarily a block or anything like that. It's more to hold the space to protect my center line here. And then, then it's the four press. And we have what we have, skill level sets, different levels. If it's level one, I'm coming in my whole body. Level two is I'm, this arm is usually coming out well, first. It's just a natural progression where, like a cross punch. I'll use the punch. I come here and I come in, and then my step takes the distance. Here, here, and then there, and then the punches. Oh, nice. We got The idea is to kind of <laughs> start out long and big, so maybe long and big is here, here, and we're learning the basics of distance and angle. Then we got to get where, where it's timing and coming in here. And really, we're just taking everything kind of shortening it up, right? As so, you close that so it becomes really a brain. fight. So the chino the might look kind of like this. It's here, here, and then the end. Mm. So traditionally, Sweeney Okada would look for something like this. Uh, he would punch. I would do this kind of long, boom, over, exaggerated, gross movement. It looks typical. So I'm not doing this huge block, which also ends us up to pow. Huh. Right? I, as, as he's coming in, I'm just going boom. Just use slightly rocking forward, which is giving me this opening to come in and deliver that, that strike. And I might hold it here because he might have a bunch of friends. And then it's ninjutsu, so to got from art means to got through you is the art of escaping. And from this point, I'm out of there. It's like, what do you guys see? You guys see him getting ready to attack me, and I'm just kind of going, oh no, this big guy is going to attack me. And then I'm gone. The thing about it may look different because it always comes out different times here. Boom, boom. And I'm moving on to something else. Yeah. 
technique from there, take down from there. Spike, boom, here, and as I'm rocking this open, because I want to strike it here, boom, and now I'm moving to something else. 